Welcome back, MTN Giants podcast. Hmm, how many more games are left is pretty much all I have to say, because I don't know how much of this I can watch anymore. I mean, yeah, I did expect to win today. I did. I really thought the Giants had a chance today. They were only one point underdogs when this game closed, but they lose the game 30-6. to six. They lose Daniel Jones for what looks like could be the entire season with a torn ACL, possibly. We'll find out what the MRI, uh, MRI says tomorrow morning, probably, but ain't looking good so far. But um, just one of those games that when it was 14 nothing, you knew it was over. Tommy DeVito, nice story, just not that great of a quarterback, unfortunately. He looked better than last week. It, it couldn't get much worse, but DeVito was not that great overall he did have his first career touchdown so that was nice but at one point he was one for three with two interceptions I mean it was it was rough in the beginning so um I guess the good news is look the Giants are going to probably get a top five pick could be top three could they get number one I mean it seems like a bit of a long shot we need Arizona to start winning games and they get Kyler Murray back so that's it's possible but then again, Carolina has to win. Chicago has to keep winning. So, you know. But the Giants, I mean, if they don't have... Ty- Tyrod Taylor's out the next three or four games. So, you're without him. It seems like Jones is out for the rest of the year. So, if you're stuck with Matt Barkley and Tommy DeVito, I don't know how you win games. I mean, at least the next two games are at Dallas, at Washington, So you're probably not winning those. And Tyrod is not eligible for the home game versus the Patriots. And I know the Patriots aren't good, but they're still like a pretty competent team. They did beat the Bills a couple weeks ago. They should have won today. They lost to Washington by three. So I would assume the Giants lose their next three games. I mean, they're not going to sign any other quarterback, can they? Like, can they really really sign, like, Carson Wentz or someone like that? Like, I don't think they're going to do it. It's possible, but I don't know. We'll, We'll find out what happens there. But, you know, after that, you have Green Bay, the Saints, the Eagles, the Rams, the Eagles again. So it's, I don't think, I think five wins for this team is impossible. I would say the most they can win is probably four this year. Four and 13 probably is the ceiling, which is just crazy to think. But realistically, I think this could be like a three-win a three win team. Like three wins is possible. Um, could they go winless the rest of the year? I mean, it's, hey, it, it depends. Like if Tyrod's not healthy enough to come back, there's a chance that this team finishes the year at two and 15. I, I would not put it past them. But realistically... I think they win another game somewhere, whether it's the Green Bay game or the Rams game late in the season. Like, I think they win some game, but, you know, this might only be a three-win team. And at that point, you're probably going to have a top three pick. And if the Cardinals get better, if Bryce Young gets better in the second half, there's a chance it could be one or two. So that's pretty much all we have to look forward to, unfortunately. We'll go through the game. There's not much to say, obviously, but we'll go through it. Talk some big picture stuff at the end. Hope you guys enjoy. Leave a like. Always helps out. And let's get into it. So the game started out pretty terribly. I mean, you can tell that Jones was not healthy. I don't know why he was out there. I mean, I'm sure Jones was pushing to play, and I respect that with Jones. Like, you know, I may criticize Jones for like his play on the field and whatnot, but like the guy is like tough as shit. I got it. I got to be honest. Like, he's one of the toughest players you'll ever see. But like, even the fact that he tore his ACL probably and tried to play through it, I mean, it's just it's crazy. So the guy is tough as hell. But he probably should not have him playing today. He looked awful from the first throw. I mean, the first throw was a, a throw in the flat to Barkley, threw it 10 yards over his head, and, you know, he had the uh, had the deep ball attempt to high it. It was a terrible throw. He overthrew high at a different time. There was the play where Marcus Peters should have had an interception, and he dropped it. Um, just Jones did not look right, plain and simple. I don't know why he was in there. As I said, he probably pushed to play, but sometimes you got to protect the players from themselves. And I know Jones gives them the best chance to win over a Tommy DeVito, but still, you got to be safe in these situations. I know, like, obviously the neck injury has nothing to do with a torn ACL. I'm not saying that, but like, something about Jones looked very off from the start of this game. So, um, but yeah, he just did not look great. The, the knee buckled in the late first quarter. 
came back in. And I think Brian Dable kind of like, you know, Brian Dable said in the post game that Jones said he felt good, which obviously was a lie because, you know, he dropped back. And by the time he reached the end of his drop and he tried to plant on that right leg, his leg gave out and he pretty much, you know, sacked himself again. So just a bad way to go out. I mean, personally, like I wanted to see Jones finish the year because I just feel like we need to see, like not need to see what he is. Cause I think we know what he is, but I also don't want the Giants to like have the built-in excuse for Daniel Jones to be like, oh, he was injured, so we don't need a quarterback, which I feel like most teams wouldn't do that. But if any team were to make that excuse, it's probably the Giants. So for me, I just wanted Jones to fin- finish out the year healthy and see what it would look like. I'm sure it would not have been that great anyway, but I wanted to see what it was going to look like. And now we're probably not going to see it. Now, if it's as significant as an ACL injury, He's probably not going to be back until, you know, week five, six, seven, eight, whatever. Um, kind of like the Kyler Murray situation, how, you know, it's it's week nine and Kyler Murray has not played yet. He is supposed to come back in week 10 next week and make his season debut. It could be something like that. So, you know, regardless, the Giants have to get a quarterback next year. It's it, They can't roll into 2024 with Tyrod Taylor and Tommy DeVito and call it a day. Like they have to have some sort of good competition at the quarterback position next year whether that's a free agent or whether it's the first round pick in the draft I don't know but the Jones injury if it is an ACL he's probably not going to be ready for week one you know it's it's possible I've seen recoveries like it before it's possible I remember Adrian Peterson tore his in December and he was back by week one the the next year and won the freaking MVP but You know, everyone heals differently, but I feel like in most cases, probably not ready for week one. Tommy DeVito didn't look great. He had the interception to Amik Robinson, Robertson, on the uh, deep ball. He underthrew it by like five yards. Doesn't have the best arm, of course. The other interception was probably Darius Slayton's fault. I didn't see a slow motion replay, but it looked like it hit off Slayton's like arms or hands. Got batted up for an interception, so not good. So, yeah, I mean, look, DeVito looked better than the Jets game, but it ain't saying a whole lot. Wasn't that impressed for the most part. Um, There were some nice plays in there, some nice throws, but, you know, still, obviously he's not the answer at the quarterback position. Running the ball-wise, Saquon had success. Only 16 carries. Of course, the game kind of got out of hand, so the Giants were in a negative game script. They couldn't run the ball all game. But 16 carries for 90 yards for Saquon, 5.6 a carry, 26 yards was his longest run. DeVito had four carries for 17 yards. Um, Daniel Jones had two carries for nine yards before he left the game. Receiving-wise, let's see. Saquon had three catches for 23 yards. Wandale had the four catches for 35 and a touchdown. Darius Slayton actually led the team with 59 receiving yards. I mean, that's nice to see. Daniel Bellinger got involved, three catches for 43 yards. But overall, just not a not a fun offensive day to watch. You know, they went for the two-point conversion. They tried that Philly special play with Bellinger at quarterback. And it kind of reminded me of that play against the Packers last year. I think they scored a touchdown on that play. It was the same exact play, basically, Bellinger in that game against the uh, Packers in London. I think he dove in for a touchdown. He was supposed to be the quarterback, but he dove in for a touchdown because nobody was open. So... You know, unfortunately, not the same result this time. It seemed like the Raiders knew that was coming. So, yeah, unfortunate there. But, you know, offensive line-wise, it wasn't the best day. Uh, Max Crosby obviously had a big game. I'm trying to see because I know somebody tweeted Max Crosby's stats. You know, Max Crosby had three sacks today, six quarterback pressures. I mean, that's obviously a great game. Uh, tough day for Evan Neal for the most part. I feel like Evan Neal, he showed some positive steps in like the games when Tyrod was playing, like the uh, Bills game specifically. So I don't know. Like I'm, I'm trying not to give up hope on Evan Neal, but at the same time, it's very frustrating because he just has these terrible performances, and the guy was like a you know a seventh overall pick. So it's it's frustrating, but you know he'll he'll get to finish out this year. Hopefully we see more positive signs of growth, but maybe the conversation of do you move him to guard happens in the offseason, but do you want to pull the plug only two years into his career? I don't know. So I guess it depends like who they sign, what the, uh, you know, the depth chart looks like and all that type of stuff. But Evan Neal definitely not looking like, I don't want to say he's not looking like the long-term right tackle, because as I said, I don't want to give up on him, but 
I guess the better way to say it is there you can't have a lot of confidence that Evan Neal is going to be the right tackle here in like three to four years. Like it's just, you can't say that with confidence. I hope it works out, but you can't say it with confidence. Um, the Giants defense, it was not the best day for them, obviously. Um, Aiden O'Connell, who was a guy who, as I said in the preview video, he was sacked seven times against the Chargers last time he played Aiden O'Connell. He was sacked zero times today. So that's unfortunate. Uh, O'Connell had 209 passing yards, 8.4 Yards per attempt, had that 50-yard completion to, uh, what the hell's his name, Trey Tucker against uh, Deontay Banks. Deontay Banks, by the way, definitely not his best game. He had his worst game, probably, of his career so far. He had the one out route against Adams where he slipped. He got torched by Jacoby Myers on the first drive. There was the Trey Tucker play I just mentioned, the 50-yard gain. And, yeah, he just did not have a good game. It happens. He's a rookie. Um, so far, I've been very encouraged by Deontay Banks, but I would say this game was just, it was not it. Just not his day. Um, Josh Jacobs had a pretty nice game. Once again, not the best efficiency, 3.8 a carry, but 26 carries for 98 yards and two touchdowns for Josh Jacobs. Jacoby Myers had the end-of-round touchdown, 17-yard carry for one touchdown. I mean, it... It kind of felt like at times, like guys were just kind of just not making business decisions, but guys were not making the best efforts of shedding blocks. I saw this with Adoree Jackson on the uh, touchdown that Jacoby Myers scored. I just feel like the tackling effort was not uh, not that great today, and you know the defense it had been great ever since the uh, ever since the Buffalo game, right? I mean the Giants' defense the past three games has looked tremendous. And then this game against, you know, a Raiders team that was very hyped up and had the new coach. And as I said in the preview, again, like sometimes when you get a new coach, these things happen where a team all of a sudden that looked like it had no life all of a sudden has this great life. I mentioned that comparison to the Colts last year, how Jeff Saturday came in and the you know Colts looked awesome. They won their first game with Jeff Saturday. I think they lost the rest, but still the first game is always different. And, of course, Josh McDaniels seemed like he was very not liked by that Raiders locker room. I'm sure there were some players that liked him, but obviously, for the most part, McDaniels was not loved by everybody. Um, but what else happened defensively? I mean, I feel like some guys played pretty well. I know Dexter Lawrence had a tackle for loss in there. Um, Xavier McKinney actually had seven solo tackles. That was good to see. Uh, McFadden had a couple nice run stops. I remember he stopped Josh Jacobs at one point behind the line. He did have two tackles for loss. Um, Okereke had the one tackle for loss. Ashawn Robinson had one as well. Um, not much else really. You know, I think Jason Pinnock got shaken up at one point. I think he was fine. Uh, Cordell Flott made a nice play at one point. On Jacoby Myers, he would have had a first down, but Cordell Flott broke it up. Not much else, though. There's really not much else to say about this defense. It just wasn't the best day. You know, Deontay Banks was giving a, well, he was given a pass defended, and so was Pinnock, but there's really not many other positives I can come away with here. I mean, Dexter Lawrence had only two solo tackles. It wasn't the best day for him, of course. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's just it's just is what it is. This this game was just not fun. Um, you know, I hate reacting to games like this because there's nothing you can go off of. It feels like 2021 reacting to Mike Glennon, and the only thing that matters is like the draft for next year. And like we're sitting here in early November, and now the only thing that matters to me, at least, is like you know how high of a pick can the Giants get? And by the way, the Giants' offense has been so bad. This is a tweet or an X post, however you want to say it, from WBG84 on Twitter, or X, once again, the Giants have 101 points, which is the fewest scored by any team through the first nine games of a season since the 2018 Buffalo Bills. How ironic. So yeah, the 2018 Buffalo Bills are the only team that had a worse offense than the Giants um, through the first nine games of a season. So the offense has been that bad. And look, my expectations for the Giants offense coming into the year were not sky high. I figured it'd be a little better than what we saw last year because what we saw last year did not seem too sustainable, right? I mean, it was Saquon early in the year, giving him a bunch of carries and, and asking Jones to do like, you know, some uh, easy play action passes and bootlegs and all that stuff. 
Of course, the last few weeks of the season, Jones played some lesser defenses and he looked great versus the Vikings and the Colts and whatnot. But I figured like coming into this year with Wandell back and Jalen Hyatt and Darren Waller, who's also on IR now, um, I figured this offense would be a bit more vertical. And at times it has, but mostly with Tyrod Taylor, sadly. But I figured this offense would be a lot more just, you know, just better looking. Like I, I figured that you would at least push the ball downfield more. Uh, you would score more points than you did last year. And so far, it just has not been the case. I mean, this offense is historically bad. I just, as, I, as I mentioned through, you know, it's it's been five seasons since an offense has been this bad through the first nine games. So it's just, it sucks. I know injuries are a big part of it. Losing Andrew Thomas, losing Daniel Jones, uh, losing Darren Waller now. Um, you know, offensive line issues, blah, blah, blah. But... Still, with like the offensive minds of Brian Dable and Mike Kafka, it's a shame that we're not going to, um, you know, have a better offense. It's probably going to be this bad the rest of the year. Like, as I said, unless they sign, and even if they signed Carson Wentz, is Carson Wentz even good? Like, he was respectable in the 2021 season. I think he had like 27 touchdowns, only nine interceptions. He was fine. But last year, he looked horrible for Washington. So, even if you signed a guy like that, it doesn't look a whole lot better. And right now, the Giants are 15 and a half point underdogs against the Dallas Cowboys. 15 and a half. My gosh. So, uh, yeah, we're not winning next week. You can bet the house on it. Um, and, yeah, I just, listen, at this point, just give me the first pick. I mean, that's pretty much the only thing I have to look forward to. And I do get in this argument with people all the time about, oh, how could you root for your team to lose? I mean, why? Like, what's the point of winning, bro? Like, you have Tommy DeVito playing. Your team is going nowhere. Like, just lose. Get the first pick and get Caleb Williams and let's go. Like, let's build a real team for once, you know? Um, And it, it's hard to feel bad for John Mara. This is probably what he wanted. It, it's hard to feel bad for the fans that were saying, run it back, run it back. You know, we went to the divisional round last year. We'll be even better this year. Like, the fans that were saying all that stuff, like, I don't feel bad for those people. <laughs> like, I feel bad for the people like myself that wanted to still rebuild and wanted to move on from Jones and, you know, just do a proper rebuild. And now, you know, with the Jones contract in the way and spending money in the off season on, you know, getting Darren Waller and Okereke, whatever, like there's money tied up now that you probably couldn't use if you had just went to the proper rebuild, which is what I wish they had done. But, you know, they still are probably going to have a great pick. Hopefully end up with Caleb or Drake May. One of those two would be great. And at that point you can properly just rebuild the team. Like you can get you can get um Dable and Shane to bring in their own guys and do their own rebuild and not bring in these old Gettleman guys and and try to make them look better like they can finally rebuild the team like they want to. And whether that's with or without Saquon Barkley, I don't know. Does Saquon even last the rest of the year because they're going to lean on him a lot? I don't know. So, you know, there's still, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. Eight games left of this garbage that we have to watch. So we're a little over halfway through the year. And I just wish it was over. Like, I, if I could just, if I could just sign up for the two pick right now and just simulate the season like it was Madden, I'd probably do it. Like, there's just, I just don't want to watch the rest of this. Right now, it's just built in me as a fan that I'm gonna watch. Like, I'm saying these things, but I'm still gonna watch. Like, I think we all say that. Like, I can't watch this team anymore, but we still do. I think some people don't. Some people actually say that and they actually don't watch the games anymore. Like, some people are like, screw it, I'm not watching the Giants. And they can go out and have, you know, live a normal life and or go pumpkin picking with their girlfriend or something. Like, I'm not that kind of guy. I just I have to be on the couch on Sundays. I have to be watching football or else it just doesn't feel right. So I'm going to be watching the Giants and it's going to be bad next week. It's going to be ugly. They're going to lose to the Cowboys like probably like 37 to 10 or something. Like, it's going to be awful. So, you know, what's coming and. You know, it just is what it is. There's there's no hope. There's no hope. Can Matt Barkley come in and save this team? No. I mean, he probably is better than Tommy DeVito, but he ain't a, he ain't a whole lot better. That's for sure. Um, there are also some bad, just like discipline 
things in this game today, like the false start on the fourth and inches when they were going to go for it in the first drive of the game. And Evan Neal had a false start, and then Brian Dable, you know, they pan to him on the sideline, and he says WTF, and he says the entire thing. Um, So that happened. There was another thing later where they had another false start in the, um, I think it was the late, was it the late third quarter? I forget when this was, but another fourth and inches. And they had a false start, got pushed back again, but luckily they dumped it off to Barkley. He picked up the first down anyway. But just stupid, like, discipline things like that. Now, I'm sure some people will call for Brian Dable's job and Joe Shane's job. And, you know, I'm not there. I just, I don't, I think no matter how bad this year gets, I'm still having some level of faith in this coaching staff, in this general manager to get it right. Now, did I lose confidence in Joe Shane when he signed Daniel Jones to that contract? Absolutely. How could you not? But with a guy like Dable, who, like when Dable has the right pieces, the guy can cook with good offensive talent. But the Giants don't have that right now, right? I still don't think Brian Dable has had a good quarterback since being the Giants head coach, right? It's been Daniel Jones. It was... um what was it, Davis Webb that one game, Davis Webb last year, Tommy DeVito, and Tyrod Taylor. I don't think any of those four guys are even like, I don't want to be too hard on Daniel Jones, but like, I don't want to say not above average quarterbacks, but definitely not top 15. Like, Brian Dable has not even had a top 15 quarterback since being the Giants head coach. Brian Dable has not had a top 20 offensive line since being the Giants head coach. Now, I'm sure some of that has to do with the, uh, <clears throat> with the offensive line coach that he loves to have. But still, I mean, the Giants offensive line, it did look better with Tyrod. You have to be honest. The offensive line looked better when Tyrod was playing. And I hope that if it's Caleb or Drake May, whatever, they can make the offensive line look better. Because, of course, a decisive quarterback makes your offensive line look better. Of course, like that's I think we all know that by now. I wish more people got that, but it's true. So, you know, it, it's just, it's all about the future with this team. I don't care about the rest of this year. I really don't. You know, I don't want to sit there and actively root against the Giants, but like, what else can you do? Because if they happen to pull off like a five or six win season here, I mean, that's probably like the worst thing for this franchise. Like, sometimes what feels wrong is right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but sometimes what feels wrong is actually the right thing. And while it may feel wrong, to root against the Giants the rest of this year. It is the right thing because what this team needs is a full-on rebuild. They need a top two pick. They need a Caleb or a Drake May to come in and try and save this franchise. You can't keep this going with Jones. You can't keep this going with Tyrod. You can't keep this going with Tommy DeVito. And it's not all about the quarterback position. It's not, but that's where it starts. And our people always say, how could you draft a quarterback when the offensive line is not not good? Like, stop. I hate when people say that shit. It's so stupid. Like, yeah, should the freaking Jaguars have passed on Trevor Lawrence because the Jags' offensive line was not good? Like, what? Stop. It's stupid. It's stupid. I understand. Like, why do you think these teams pick high in the draft anyway? Because they're not good. And most teams that aren't good have bad offensive lines. So how do you expect to have a good offensive line and have a high draft pick to get a Caleb or a Drake May? It's not going to happen. You have to get the quarterback and then fix the offensive line. And as I mentioned, a decisive quarterback and a better quarterback than what we have now will make the offensive line look better. It won't be as big of an issue. No, it's not perfect. I know that. But it's going to make it look better. So that kind of stuff is stupid to me. You have to find a way to get the franchise quarterback in this draft. If they don't, then I don't know. I'm going to lose a lot of interest. Like if the Giants don't draft a quarterback in April and this season ends with three or four wins and the Giants have a very high pick in the draft, like let's say they're picking in the top five. If the Giants are picking top five and they don't take a quarterback, I am going to lose a lot of interest in this team. I'm going to have almost no desire to watch them or follow them or make videos about them or any of that stuff, right? I'm still going to be a fan, still going to watch them, but not closely. You know, it's going to be one of those like, eh, whatever. If they win, cool. If they lose, whatever. But that's what I'm saying. They have to get a quarterback in this draft. There's just no doubt about it. You can't keep feeding us this bull crap and expecting us to take it. You know, like I know, I know if you, if you rewind three, four months ago, there were a lot of people that were all in on Jones and a lot of people that were all in on having a 10 or 11 win season 
And I'll be honest, like even I, as pessimistic as I get, when I saw Vegas have the Giants at seven and a half wins, I was like, what the hell is that? Seven and a half wins? Like we're definitely like at least an eight or nine win team. And listen, Vegas knows. Vegas knows. If there's something I learned in the past few years, Vegas knows. Now, maybe they didn't expect a two or three win season, but Vegas knows. And, you know, so far that number is looking, uh, you know, at this point, six and a half wins would be a freaking miracle. Well, obviously, you can't win six and a half, but six or seven wins would be a miracle. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for big picture stuff. You just get the quarterback. There's there's not much else to say. You know, like I'm just tired of being like I'm tired of having this crap thrown at us about like, oh, Daniel Jones is the future. He just needs an offensive line, just needs the weapons. Like, no, I've seen enough. I've like you watched him for five years. I've seen enough. I like even after like 2020, like I knew what he was or even 2021, like I'll give a quarterback about three years, like three years. You, you know what a quarterback is after three years. Nobody really breaks out in year four. Nobody breaks out in year five. Like, yeah, you can say, okay, you can argue that maybe Daniel Jones quote unquote broke out last year, but look at the numbers. It wasn't even that good of a season. It was an above average season. Sure. You can look at certain metrics that make Daniel Jones' 2022 season look great. But if you look at the game, look at his uh look at his game logs, look at the style of football the Giants play, look at how they won games. A lot of it wasn't Daniel Jones like putting the team on his back. As I said, yes, there were games where it happened. There were about four games last year that Jones was amazing and looked great and looked like a franchise quarterback. The other, you know, the other six, seven wins or, you know, whatever it was, he just was just just there like he was just there being like a system quarterback like it wasn't anything that impressive so it's just disappointing that this is the area that we're in right now when you know it may take another year or two to really get back to uh, competing at a high level but hopefully by 2025 so a year and a half from now we can have a team that is uh exciting and has uh, a great young quarterback and You know, because every time you get a young quarterback, like when you have a rookie quarterback, the expectation is not to win right away. It's for the quarterback to develop and then look better in year two and hopefully look elite by year three. So maybe we're talking about 2026 at that point. But like, I don't care. Like, I have the patience. I'm fine with it. Like, I'm not that old. So I I can definitely endure a rebuild for a couple years if it means that by 2026 or whatever, that the Giants will be like consistent Super Bowl contenders and be where like the Bengals are or the Bills are or the Chiefs are or the Ravens are and just always be in the conversation for winning Super Bowls year after year. And that's what bothers me about fans that, you know, now that we're two and seven, like certain fans are going to be like, you know, how could you root for losses and blah, blah, blah. Like, I just want, I like some people want to win these games just to feel good for the next few days. And like, I'm more worried about what the next 10 to 15 years are going to look like. I don't care if we win uh, the rest of the year. I really don't care. Like, I'm more worried about how do the next 10 to 15 years look for this franchise? Not did we beat the freaking Patriots on a random Sunday when we're two and nine? Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I want to, I care about the next decade of Giants football and can we be Super Bowl contenders? I don't care about that stuff. I don't care about beating the Patriots. I don't care about beating the Green Bay Packers or the Rams. I don't care. Whatever. If you want three or four wins, cool. But, the best thing for us, once again, get the franchise quarterback, get Caleb or get Drake, and let's go compete for Super Bowls. It t- it may take a while. I get it. It's it's you don't want to wait, right? We all wanted to come into this year and Jones looked great and the offense was cooking and the defense looked great, but that's just not how it went. And unfortunately, that was pretty foreseeable. I mean, not this bad. I listen. I did not expect the season to go this badly, but it was pretty foreseeable that. It was not going to go the way that a lot of the optimistic fans thought it was going to go. And, you know, unfortunately, that's just how it is. So anyway, I think I ranted enough here, but um, we'll be back for like, I don't even know if I'm going to preview the Cowboys game. Like I'm going to make the spread picks. I guess I'll talk about it a bit. So, yeah, I'll talk to you guys on Friday for the Cowboys preview, but 
I'll mostly do it for the NFL picks at that point because, you know, what's there to preview? We're going to get our asses handed to us on Sunday is what it is, right? In Dallas, we, we don't win there anyway. It's been since, what, 2016, I think, was the last time, the Terrence Williams game. So, yeah, I think 2016 was the last time we won there. So, yeah, we're not winning on Sunday. Not much to talk about there, but... Yeah, so disappointing. Um, hopefully the Jones news is nothing serious. Hopefully it's like a, I don't know, like a meniscus or some shit like that. But probably not going to look good tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, we'll see what happens at the quarterback position. Do they sign anybody? Um, is it Matt Barkley and, and Tommy DeVito the rest of the way? And if it is, probably going to have a very high pick. So, But then again, Tyrod can come back, I think, once the, uh, I think, what, week 15? Now, I think week 14, Tyrod can come back because he missed this game, the Cowboy game. Yeah, so I think in week 14, he can come back and play in the last five games. So maybe we finish out the last month or so with Tyrod, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Once again, leave a like if you stayed this long, and I'll talk to you guys next time.